I'm in the jungle. And I have absolutely no experience in South America. I never set a foot there. So I went in the Amazon to look at a specific community in Bolivia, and more specifically in a settlement called Anachere. We went to look at the Chimane, and the Chimane, there are about 2,500 people living in the Amazon. We went upriver for about two days in dugout canoes after, you know, two, three days flights, buses, car, whatever. We follow the Maniki River right here, which is a tributary of the Amazon. And eventually, after two days, we got here. This is the Nate family welcoming us with SpongeBob. You see SpongeBob? <laughs> They live in small family settlements. They will have one settlement here, and then you need to walk for 15, 20 minutes, half an hour through the jungle or up the river to reach another settlement. And you know, it's very dense jungle. And they usually live in these bamboo houses with palm leaf roofs. They used to be full-time hunter-gatherer, only relying on hunting and gathering. Now, about 200 years ago, missionaries came there and introduced them to uh, cultivation, to agriculture. And so they grow a lot of plantain and banana, a bit of rice as well, and corn, which is originally from that part of the world. And they do slash and burn agriculture. They burn, they grow right next to their settlement. And so there's a lot of plantain. They eat so much plantain. It's very dangerous because, you know, you're like, oh, I'm going to split on that. You know, these, these banana skins and stuff everywhere. <laughs> and they take the plantain and they throw it directly in the fire. Or they leave the skin on, or they shave it. There's all kinds of things. Let's go for a little uh, drive down the river. And so the family gathered around, often the fireplace like this. This is the kitchen. This is it, you know, just a, an open space. The youngster would be around, and often the older men, they're going out hunting. And everybody hopes for some meat to come back. But I'm sitting there, and I see the two girls, like, standing up, and they're just leaving. I'm like, well, they're going. You know, I need to know anything, what's going on. I need to, you know. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. They're just going into the jungle. I'm like, dude, but there's, like, snakes, all this stuff. Yeah, that's their home. This is, for them, like, going around the block here. And so they go out in the jungle, and they start foraging. They're just, you know, sitting there, and they just get up at some point from camp, just start walking in the jungle. Let's go and find something to bite on. And found this palm tree um, and started to eat palm uh, fruit, which is full of good stuff. And I looked around, and I saw these nice red berries. I'm like, ooh, this looks good. And they're like, yeah, you eat that, you're dead. And I was like, okay. <laughs> um, so they know. I don't know. They are incredibly intimate. This really impressed me. To see especially youngsters just go out like this. It's really beautiful. They often go with dogs. They have a lot of, a few dogs laying around that they use for hunting. And there's a lot of rodents or, you know, various animals that live underground. So they hunt it when the dogs find something. They go with a machete, try to clear out the opening to help the dog and find the animal. Um, my room was in the far right there. I'll show you because it's such a nice spot. So this is it. This is my bedroom. Cool stuff. There's a mini bar. Let me show you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Computer inside. I was miserable in Bolivia. I was really miserable. <laughs> There's so many mosquitoes. It's incredibly hot. I'm more like a you know, yak high altitude type than monkey jungle thing. <laughs> so next day we go down the river. We want to go to a next camp. And you know what happened is this is the real evolution of diet. When you start feeding your camera with rice, um, I fell. I fell in the river. My camera went fully into the river. And uh, I had a backup. Thanks God for a backup so I could still shoot. But it survived. So I put that in a Ziploc with rice. So it, if it ever happens, you all know the trick with phone and stuff. And it worked. A week later, 10 days later, I switched it on and it worked. You know, we ended up going upriver. I have changed my camera. I got another camera, thanks God. 
And we walked into this beautiful scene where this old man, the older man, we saw him before in his plantation standing, that's him again. I went back. I love to go back to the same spot because he's at ease. You know, he's washing. He was stark naked, but you know, he's seen me before. I've talked to him before. He just lets me there. And all this butterfly flying around. You can see the body of one of the oldest men I met there and who's been a hunter-gatherer all his life. That would give this kind of body. He's over 70, still very active, so physical, because, yeah, he has to walk every day to feed himself. His you know, kids will help him. But they go hunting. And so I went hunting. Next day with his son, they brought back food, finally. They brought this armadillo that they cut up in pieces and tastes very much like chicken, like anything. They boil the meat. They also had this koti, which is a bit similar to a badger. They singe it in the fire, straight in. Protein is very important, protein. Uh, this is the only way for them to get it. They don't get animals every day. Yeah, and if they get that once a week, they'll be happy. Uh, and then they do the gutting. Often the kids do the gutting. The guys come back from a long day, sometimes the whole day in the jungle. They're exhausted. They arrive back to camp. They bring the food. Um, they sit down. The women prepare fire. And then the kids are given the task to go and prepare the animal. Everywhere, most, mostly everywhere where I went, it's often the kids who do that task. And so the pieces of meat are taken. Uh, there's plantain that is shaven and boiled, a bit of salt in there. And they have this kind of porridge, quite tasty result in that plate there. So stomach full, you know, feeling quite content. I returned, and I knew I was quite happy. I knew what my next destination was.